And finally, a project we are very excited about here at the News Hour. It's a collaboration with the New York Times, a new book club for the new year. Jeffrey Brown tells us more. It's my pleasure to announce a new book club we're calling Now Read This. Every month we'll feature a new book, fiction, history, memoir, and much more. And we'll invite you to read along, to join us throughout the month for features about the book and its author, and to send in questions you have for the author for an interview I'll conduct at the end of the month. We are very excited about it, and this is also special and unusual for us because Now Read This is a partnership between the NewsHour and the New York Times. And with me now is Pamela Paul, editor of the New York Times Book Review, and joining us is my colleague at the NewsHour, Elizabeth Flock, to tell you more about the book club's many features. Pamela, first of all, it's a pleasure to do this with you. Share with the audience how we thought about picking books and all. Well, I think what's unique about this book club is that it is two news organizations working together and that the books that we're, we're choosing are not only chosen on the merit of the book themselves, but also really selected because these are books that matter now. These are books that touch upon our times, the issues that are important right now, and books we think will really engage re readers and viewers in a discussion. Question I'm always asked by people is, you know, how do you pick your art stories? How do you pick your books? And there's a, there's always a little bit of I know when I when I see it and serendipity of the moment, but that but the kind of you know the urgency that has to be on a news program that's something important and that's what we talked about when we thought about this yeah I mean at the New York Times book review our criteria is a little bit different in that it really mm -hmm. does come down to the book itself but I think what's interesting here is that this is a book club selection and there are certain kinds of books that work especially well for book clubs and that make you know in this case make sense for a book club that's driven by the news so Liz tell people how what they'll find and where they'll find it and what kind of features we'll have sure so the best way to join the book club is through our Facebook group now read this um, we want uh, everyone to sort of be able to join together there as they read and discuss the book in real time with members of our staff and fellow readers and send in their questions even for the author mm -hmm. um, and and also we'll be posting so much there from discussion questions to help guide them as they read the book uh, to writers advice from the author to sort of an inside look at how the book was written all the tools you need whether you already are in a book club or if you want to start your own and follow us. We really hope that uh, book clubs around the country sort of read along as, as we do. Okay, so that cues our first choice, right? Which is Jesmyn Ward, her novel Sing, Unburied Sing, one of the most acclaimed novels of recent years. Pamela, why did we pick this one? What, what interested you? Well, it's the book itself, which is a book that deals with race, it deals with violence, it deals with the legacy of Hurricane Katrina. And then it's also about the author, about uh, Jesmyn Ward, who's really become a kind of literary force. She won the National Book Award for this book. It was her second National Book Award. Her second novel, Salvage the Bones, won the award in 2011. She is the first woman to win twice for fiction of uh, the National Book Award. And in addition to that, she edited an anthology uh, that came out last year, um, writers writing essays on race called The Fire This Time. And she wrote a memoir called Men We, Men we Reaped, which was about the death of her brother and four other young black men from Mississippi. So much of her work is really grounded in her community in Mississippi. Um, Jesmyn is the first person in her family to attend college. She went on to go to Stanford and she writes about the community that she came from. One of the things I found most moving was that at the National Book Awards ceremony this year when she accepted her award, she said that she had been very discouraged at first by publishers who said that they didn't think that readers would be interested in reading about the kinds of people she wanted to write about. And obviously it turns out that, that she was wrong happily on that uh, point because readers have in fact been taken. Yeah, for this particular book, I'm cheating in this case because I got to read it months ago for a visit to that small town in Mississippi. In fact, I want to show a little clip from the interview that we aired. News Hour viewers will have seen it a few months ago. This is Jasmine Ward talking a little bit about, um, in this book, turning to writing about the supernatural, which was new for her, and how it made her think about uh, writing a little differently. Let's take a look at that. Most of my fiction is pretty realistic, right? And so here I was, um, you know, introducing the supernatural, introduce, introducing like the magical mm -hmm. into um, into my fiction, and it's a different kind of writing, right? It's the kind of writing where you have to invent an entire world. It has to be believable. Tell us, Liz, about so what will hap What will people find with Jasmine? 
Well, so Jasmine is going to give us some of the writer's advice that she's received over time, but also our staff is reading Sing Unburied Sing, as you all do, and um, one of the settings of Sing Unburied Sing is Parchman Prison. It's the oldest prison in Mississippi. It long operated like a plantation. It was really institutionalized racism for many years, and someone on our staff is doing a deep dive into Parchman Prison, past and present. And then at the end of the month, I will interview Jasmine with the questions that all you people out there will send in to us and readers from the New York Times. And at that point, we will also announce the next book, which we three have been talking about and have an idea about. And we're going to invite people to send suggestions in for, for what we should turn to over the coming months. We hope this will build and build. We will have readers galore. And for now, Liz Flock, Pamela Paul, and all of you, please join us for our new book club. Thanks.